We'll begin this series with a relatively simple entry on Jesus' use of the term Abba to refer to God the Father. No, no, not that Abba. This one. Some time ago, a biblical scholar named Joachim Jeremias theorized that Jesus' use of this term signaled a special relationship with God the Father. How well does that claim stand up? At the heart of Jeremiah's thesis was the idea that Abba had only come to mean father when used among human beings, and that to use the term when referring to God would have been unthinkable in the time of Jesus. The only exception noted is that of the prayer of Hanan Haniba, who uses the term indirectly for God in imitation of children gathered around him that were using it to address him, but not God. According to Jeremiah, the significance of Jesus' use of Abba is that for the first century Jew, it would have been irreverent and therefore unthinkable to call God by this familiar word. Abba, as used, therefore reveals the very basis of Jesus' communion with God, not a familiarity and intimacy with God available to anyone, but a unique relationship that was bestowed upon Jesus, representing the center of Jesus' awareness of his mission. In contradiction, the Jewish scholar Geza Vermes claimed that Abba was used to refer to God among the lower class in Palestine, but that claim has not been supported with evidence. It appears that Jesus' use of this term for God was unique, and followed by Christians later on. But what does it mean? One thing it doesn't mean is something said by Jeremiah, which has been repeated by popular preachers today. Namely, that Abba is an address that indicates a special sort of personal intimacy, and that it may be equated with the address Daddy in modern English. Jeremiah believed that Abba had its origins in the babbling baby talk of Jewish infants addressing their own fathers. From this he concluded that Abba somehow reflected the specialized intimacy and vulnerability associated with an infant and its father. Unfortunately, although Jeremiah's thesis in this regard spread like a typical urban legend, the refutations of the thesis did not. Indeed, Jeremiah himself recanted his claim, though he also continued, rather inconsistently, to repeat it as though it were true. The chief rebuttal to Jeremiah came from philologist James Barr, who in an article in the journal Theological Studies declared, Abba isn't daddy. Barr reports that Jeremiah's idea was merely speculative, and involved a sort of chicken and egg question. Did infants universally first say Abba, and then did parents adopt that as their title? Or did parents teach infants to say Abba? Either way, there remained no actual evidence for Jeremiah's thesis. So, what can be said of the significance of Abba in terms of intimacy? No, oh, very little. Jesus' single use of it is wholly without contextual additions to inform it. Abba clearly indicates some sort of exchange relationship, but without Jeremiah's endearing infant babbling thesis, there's nothing to permit reading into it notions of modern paternal intimacy and tenderness. So, back to square one. What does Abba mean when Jesus uses it of God the Father? It certainly means some sort of relationship akin to father and son. And that also means it's not the sort of thing we'd expect a mere mortal to feel free to use of the God of Judaism. But it remains nonspecific in terms of the inner mechanics of the relationship. <laughs> <laughs> uh, see you next time.